So cars still rise back to just last year when Apple said this. Every Mac that we sell is capable of doing high-end gaming. A MacBook Air is a great game machine now. That was not the case five years ago. And two, so, two, 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 two years ago. <laughs> so, so, so I think it, it has fundamentally changed and we're very excited about it. Now this is true to some extent. Gaming is now amazing on these new ARM-based chips with far more powerful integrated GPUs than what we had in the Intel generation, as long as you didn't buy the wrong Apple Silicon Mac. And if you're a normal user, this was an easy mistake to make. And you might have been very disappointed by the gaming performance when trying to run games on just eight gigabytes of RAM on the entry level model of the MacBook Air, the Mac Mini, the iMac, and even the MacBook Pro. Now, personally, I think that eight gigabytes is actually enough for the majority of normal users doing stuff like basic browsing and chatting, unless you're like my wife who keeps a billion browser tabs open all at once. I really regret giving her a computer with 32 gigabytes of RAM. And even when it comes to high-end gaming, especially with Apple's own optimized Apple Silicon ports like Death Stranding and Resident Evil 4, you can get very playable frame rates with just eight gigs. However, running anything more demanding like Baldur's Gate 3, and this will bring an eight gigabyte Mac to its knees and it'll be literally un playable. Especially when you get to Act 3, which is much more demanding, you'll go into swap space and it'll start treating your solid state drive like a RAM disk and it'll just run much slower. Remember that these M series chips use integrated GPU cores and that 8 gigabytes needs to be shared with not just macOS, but also with any background processors, the game itself, and also video memories, something normally counted separately and on top of system RAM. But two things have now changed with the introduction of the Apple Silicon M4 chip. Firstly, every single M4 that you can buy from Apple right now comes with 60 gigabytes of RAM as a minimum. And Apple in their infinite generosity also went back and updated the previous generations of MacBooks that it still sells with the M2 and M3 chip. And without increasing the price, they've actually bumped up the minimum specifications to 16 gigabytes of RAM. And now we can actually say that all Macs that you can buy new today can actually game, especially with this new 16 gigabyte floor in performance. And this is a pretty big deal because the M4 chip is now in a position to play some pretty cool native Mac games. And you don't just need the most expensive M4 Macs to see playable titles. You can even use the M4 Mac Mini with 16 gigabytes of RAM, 10 CPU cores and 10 GPU cores running at just $599 and with discounts this can be even cheaper. And with this entry level model you can play AAA games whether they're native Mac OS or running on Windows with translation layers. And secondly the M4 is a much more powerful chip than previous generations and even the lowest end M4 chip. And yes the one that's in the iMac spec at a mere 8 CPU cores and 8 GPU cores can actually game too. And this is probably quite important because it's very likely that we'll see the same configuration in the base model MacBook Air M4, which will probably be the most popular Mac that releases this generation. And it can run titles like The Sims 4 at 4K ultra settings, if that's your style, or AAA native Mac titles, or even the most demanding Windows DirectX 12 games running through crossover like Cyberpunk 2077, and also AAA games like Black Myth Wukong, albeit at severely reduced settings. Now, I'm not saying that the M4 is a purpose-built gaming machine. It clearly isn't quite there yet, but the M4 M4 is poised to become the minimum performance target for game developers and consumers to aim for. And with high-end memory hungry titles like Cyberpunk coming to Mac natively next year, which from the Steam page requires 12 gigabytes of RAM just on Windows computers, Macs needed this 16 gigabytes of RAM and increased GPU performance in order to justify that phrasing that all Macs can game now. Now the M4 chipset isn't perfect. Yes, we have 16 gigabytes of RAM, but really the next bugbear is the upgrade pricing, which is pure Apple greed. Taking, for example, the M4 Mac mini, buying an additional 200 56 gigabytes of storage and doubling the RAM will actually take your price from 599 to 1199 which is virtually the price of two base Mac minis. So Apple are still gouging us for pricing and there's a lot to improve on that front. However, at the very least, this new M4 generation is capable of delivering the future of Mac gaming in a way that the previous M series Macs were just not capable of. And this is very exciting indeed. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting. I'll be doing a whole bunch of benchmarks comparing all of the M4 chips in gaming in my next video. I hope you stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.